So we're going to be taking a look at building a mobile application using the recently released Adobe Flash Builder 4.5.1. Normally I don't go with such a specific version number, however in this case, if you upgrade with the free patch from 4.5 to 4.5.1, it's actually quite a big deal if you like to develop applications for the Apple iOS platform because now this gives you the ability to create them visually and not just using ActionScript code. And that saves a lot of time and increases productivity. And what we're going to do here is create an application that actually works with all of the supported platforms, which would be iOS, Android, and the BlackBerry tablet. And so let's go ahead and take a look at that. So the first thing we're going to do here is, is we'll go up to the file menu and choose a new project and we're going to use a flex mobile project and in this dialog box that pops up we basically answer a series of questions to set up our application and it's going to do a lot of the heavy lifting for us so I'm just going to call this my mobile app I'll just leave it at the default location and I'm going to run with the current SDK 4.5.1 and I'll just hit next now on this next screen, what you actually can do here is choose the target platforms. So you can just go through and have whichever one you want. So you can have Apple iOS, for example, or in this case, you can have all three. So I'm just going to leave all three. And it also gives you a, a starting point, a template here for three different types of application. We have a blank application with some very basic code to get us started. We have a view based application and a tab based application. Now on the tab based, you can actually go in and specify the tab names here and click the add button and add them up there and rearrange them. What we're going to do is go with a view based application and I'm just going to call this my initial view. Now the thing to note here is I think it's most likely that you're probably going to be using view based application and tab based application most of the time. On other platforms, you tend to see those style of applications quite a lot. Now, looking at the bottom down here, we're going to put a checkbox in for automatically reorient. So as we go, portrait and landscape is going to detect that for us. I'm also going to go ahead here and check the full screen. And I'm going to leave this one unchecked here, automatically scale application for different screen densities, since that doesn't apply for what we're doing here. But I'll just check it quickly to show you that you can specify a screen density if you wish. So now I'm just going to go over here to the permissions tab and what you can do depending on the platform, you may have to request certain permissions. So on Apple iOS, for example, we don't have to choose any kind of permissions. But if I go to say Google Android, you can see we have a list of check boxes here and you would put a check in to request the ability to use some of these features. So for example, if I want to connect to the internet here, or maybe I'm using, let's say, the camera and I want to write to external storage. So you just go through and check the checkboxes that you want to use, along with the description at the bottom there, just to give you a quick idea of what they are up for. On platform settings, again, depending on which ones you're choosing here, you're going to have some options. So on Apple iOS, for example, you can see we have the all three listed again, but on Apple iOS, we can choose the target devices from either all or we can specify just an iPhone or iPod Touch or the iPad. I'm just going to leave this on all for now. And I'll just show you on Google Android as well. It'll say there are no specific settings for this platform. So I'm just going to go ahead and click next again. As per usual, on any flex based application, we have the ability to specify a back end server here. I'm not going to go with any at the moment. I'm going to leave that as it is go next and then on build paths I'm just going to leave again all of this the same there's nothing special I need to set up here so I'm just going to go finish so now I'm going to give you a quick tour of some of the changes here and if you're familiar with flash builder and specifically 4.5 most of these you've probably seen but if you haven't seen it before it can be useful to know so what I'm going to do is go over to the design mode here and you can see that I have this device drop down list and on here now I can select to simulate on the screen a particular device. So I'm going to choose the iPhone 3GS here. And part of the reason for that is I have a small screen size here and this fits it nicely in the screen. Even though you can zoom in and out, I like to work at 
and you can also go through and rotate between portrait and landscape views and you can also choose from the states here but at the moment we only have the one and I've renamed this one to portrait as you can see now what I can do is if I create another one and call it landscape now what you can see here is as I change between the two at runtime the application is going to detect this and so I can actually manually lay out two different views here depending on the rotation of the device so I think that's quite a nice little feature and I use it on everything that I do you have various other ways with the constraints that you can use to reorient the screen and the layouts but I like to take complete control since we have these defined sizes for devices I like to lay them out exactly how I want to see them for example you know you may have a text field on the left here and a button on the right and in portrait mode you may have the text field at the top with the button underneath so that enables you to do that so that's just a, a quick rundown on some of the little changes there in the interface and what we're going to do now is save this file so we'll just save the changes and that's the view that's loaded here in the application and this is the actual application here very simple a very clean code right now and we'll just change this one to iPhone 3GS as well and so you can see what happens here this placeholder view loads in this my mobile app my initial view view some bad naming there but and what it does is it loads in that view this is the navigation that loads in the view but what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go up here to debug and just run this and the first time you do this this panel is gonna appear now don't panic it, it looks intimidating but actually it's pretty straightforward what's happening here is since we don't have a device connected we need to run some configuration so I'm gonna go down here and say on launch method I want to run this on the desktop and I'm gonna use the simulator to simulate a device in this case I'm gonna do the iPhone 3GS now if I had an Android device connected via USB of course it would give me the options to actually run these on the device and for Apple iOS applications what it would do is give me the option to create the .ipa file that if you were then a paid member of the Apple developer program for the iOS platform you could put into your iTunes and then sync to your device and run it from there however on this particular version I'm going to go on the desktop and use the simulator for the iPhone 3GS and go debug so now that configuration is stored and we won't see that next time we run it we just have to do that the first time or we may want to have multiple configurations but either way here's our application here very basic as you can see there's nothing in there we haven't put anything in there yet but I just wanted you to see that initial step that pops up the first time you run the application so we're just going to go ahead and quit that here and so that's our basic application set up and what we'll do next time is start to add some content here and start to work with the frameworks